will follow When you seek me, show me the way I will go I will go to the streets I will go to the lanes I will go where you lead I will go in Jesus' name I will take off my sin and shame Or I will answer just the same When Jesus calls out my name I will go I will go Teach me, Lord, I will go. In my work, send me, Lord, I will go. And in the marketplace, guide me, I'll go. I will go. to join the family of God by being baptized and following Him all the way. Join us this Saturday as we celebrate another homecoming baptism. Whether it's your first time or your returning, join thousands from across the world by walking with Jesus to the next level. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, those of you who are in-house, those of you who are on the outside, we welcome you to another spectacular evening of the Footprints of Hope, walking with Jesus to the next level. It is part three, and I know you are elated to be here as happy as we are, aren't they, Kamara? Of course, they are. Oh, such a yes, day. oh, yes. Well, if you're joining us online on YouTube, Facebook, WCC, and Bless TV, we take this opportunity to specially welcome you to church this afternoon. If you're in house this evening and you're feeling blessed and happy to be here, let me hear you say amen. 
Of course, God is indeed worthy to be praised. We welcome all our overseas partners as well as we continue to worship in the beauty of holiness. Of course, of course, of course. It is indeed a wonderful evening to be here, Sasha Lynn. We want to remind our friends that as we approach the culmination of Footprints of Hope, continue to pray with us, continue to share the link, continue to subscribe to our YouTube channel and like our Facebook pages. We want to also implore you that tonight's message is going to be a serious message. And I'm not asking, but we're telling them, Sash, because night after night we've been receiving these power-packed messages. And I believe that God has been extending grace to someone. Oh, yes. So tonight, when you hear the message, do not harden your heart. Oh, yes. Now, just before we go over to our praise team, please, I invite you to pray with us. Heavenly Father, once more we come to the throne of grace. We come for a word. We come for the anointing. Lord, we come to receive power from on high to go to the next level in our experience. Lord, I pray for a visitor. I pray for a youth, a boy or a girl a son, a daughter, a father, a mother, who is in need of this word tonight to receive it, Lord, and run to you. Father, in you is hope and life and truth. In you is freedom. So I pray, God, that whatever we do from this platform will draw men unto you, will draw boys and girls, young people, everybody unto you, O King, so we ask for your Holy Spirit's power tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We go over now to the praise team. Sing along. Tamara, after such a nice, wonderful prayer, all I want to sing is, Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul.
to stand for the theme song. Looking back in the past some centuries ago when you walk through the garden alone you left even then of hope to be followed by men down the road. Adam and Eve, yes, they walk the path, but thought that they hopelessly fell. But you sent a Savior for a thousand years later, so men young and old. you to bow your heads with me as we pray together this evening. Gracious Heavenly Father, 
It is such a joy to be in your presence another time. Loving God, your word declares that in your presence there is fullness of joy and at your right hand are pleasures forevermore. This evening, God, we praise you that you are here with your people to bless your people. We ask now, Lord, that you will take charge of worship this evening. We pray, gracious one, that you will allow the Holy Spirit to have his way in this place and across this platform, Father, and in every place where your people have gathered. We pray, Lord, that you will take charge of each participant. We pray, O oh God, that you will bind the old enemy. And we ask, O oh gracious God, that as a result of this evening's worship service, that somebody will come to know that there is a Savior and now is the acceptable time to give that life into his hands. We ask these mercies in Jesus' wonderful name. Let God's people say, Amen and Amen. Amen indeed. And even as you take your seat, you know I'm looking out in the congregation and I'm seeing a very special guest, yes. And I'm gonna invite uh, Pastor Joseph Smith, uh, Vice President of the Jamaica Union. Elder, I can't do that. Let me welcome you and, and, and you can welcome God's people. But I want to give a special shout out, Elder. There is a very special shout out and I need, and I need to give to a site in Rock Spring. That, yes, uh, uh, that is the Brethren at Jerusalem Heights. They are there. And then the, uh, the Mountainside Church is at, at, at Prentice Shop. And all so many other sites are on. We are happy you're here. Dr. Smith, Pastor Smith, welcome, welcome. It is good to see you. You look brand new in the place. Thank you. Thank you very much, Pastor Rose. I am delighted and pleased to be here at the epicenter of the Footprints of Hope, Walking with Jesus yes, uh, to the Next Level Evangelistic Series. Pastor, I have been uh, watching the series uh, while participating in some other activities, but I was determined that what was happening here was so great, so wonderful, That's that right. I had to be here to get a part, get a, an experience of the energy in the room, Indeed. and it is wonderful. I am delighted on behalf of our president, Pastor Everett Brown at Jamaica Union Conference, our other administrators and directors, to welcome every person here in the house this evening uh, to the Footprints of Hope evangelistic series. And if you're here tonight and you're having a wonderful time, you have been blessed so far by the wonderful singing. Can I hear you say amen? Amen. Truly, the Spirit of God is in this place. So I welcome those of you who are here in-house. I welcome those of you from across the West Jamaica Conference. I welcome those of you who are watching and participating from the other four conferences here in Jamaica. I want to say a very special shout out to those individuals who are participating in this series from overseas. Those churches, we are happy to have you. I want to say a special shout out also to every single person who has connected to this series who is enjoying the blessings. What a powerful preacher of righteousness. We are delighted, we are pleased to have this man of God, Pastor Glenn O. Samuels, declaring the word of God. Hearts have been transformed, lives are being changed, and we praise God for the hundreds of souls, Pastor Roach, yes, Pastor yes, Rose, indeed. who have already given their hearts to Jesus. We are confident tonight that as you join this series, you will enjoy a special blessing. Remember, Share the link. Enjoy the meetings. And it is my hope and prayer that we will all make our calling and election sure and help others so that they can come to know him whom to know is life eternal. Welcome and God bless you. And I am awaiting my blessing tonight. Yes, and I am confident I am going to receive it. Something good, God bless good you. is about to happen. Blessings. Life. You'll never ever be the same. What a change. Mm -hmm. yeah. If you knew me before. 
change. No, this is the, la the last night that we'll be here with you. You're not going to see us Friday, not going to see us Sabbath. Um, and if there's any message that I'd like you to take home apart from the others you have garnered from our songs and our ministry, Jesus saves. He saves. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know how far you've gone in sin. I don't know what you're struggling with at this moment. And you know, let me talk to the Christians for just a second. Many times we believe that our struggles shouldn't be publicized because then we won't be seen as Christians. We are all trying to make it to heaven and we can only make it to heaven if we work with our Savior, who he just wants to save us. He was, just wants to uplift us. And don't, don't hide your issues. To those that haven't accepted God yet, don't hide your issues. God wants to save you. He takes the most broken and he makes them into the most beautiful masterpieces. Jesus saves. We have heard a joyful sound. Jesus saves, Jesus saves, spread the gladness all around. Jesus saves, Jesus 
Jesus says, bear the news to every land, climb the steeps and cross the waves. Onward is our Lord's command. Jesus says, Jesus saves, wafted on the rolling tide. Jesus saves, Jesus saves, spreads the sinners far and wide. Jesus saves, Jesus saves, sing the islands of the sea, echo back the ocean caves, earth shall keep her jubilee. Jesus saves, Jesus saves, give the winds a mighty voice, Jesus saves, Jesus saves, and let the nations now rejoice Jesus saves Jesus saves shout salvation full and free highest hills and deepest caves this our song of victory Jesus saves, Jesus saves, Jesus saves, Jesus saves, Jesus saves, Jesus saves. Amen. And bless the name of the Lord for that message in song, Jesus Saves. And it is quite an appropriate song to be used as the intro for the offertory. Because you know, worship is the creature's response to what the creator has done. Jesus gave his life so that we can have life and have it more abundantly. Therefore, for the Christian Giving is not merely for a project. Giving has nothing to do with the need, but more to do with the relationship that we have with God. And so tonight, it is our opportunity to worship God by giving off our means to enhance his cause. And so wherever you are, if you are online, you can participate. The giving information is on the screen. If you are in the house, the ushers are standing by as we give Let's give our everything to the Lord. Lord, we ask you to bless these gifts that we now give. We ask it now in Jesus' name. Amen. Struggling with prayer life, Bible study, or just difficulty making that life-changing decision? We are here to help. Contact the Footprints Counseling and Prayer Teams at the West Jamaica Conference. Give us a call at 876-656-7823 or send us a WhatsApp message at 876-373-2390. Connect with us as we walk with Jesus to the next level. We can't complain. Brothers and sisters, we are at the mercy seat. This is the time that we present our request to the Lord. And one thing is guaranteed that the Lord 
will speak to our various issues. Joining me this evening is Pastor uh, Dwayne Thompson. He will be sharing in the moment. And Pastor Omar Palmer from Palm Spring Seventh-day Adventist Church. These are the praying evangelists that will be lifting up these issues tonight. We want you to know that the Lord is still on the throne. And so I just want Christine Henry to know that we have accepted and received your request. We are praying for you. Mario Paldino, who asked us to pray for Sandy, was come down with cancer. We are lifting you up. We just want you to know that the requests are coming in, and a lot of them, we are seeing where many of our people are challenged and saddled with all these issues, cancer, for example. And many of us we can understand that when we talk about cancer, uh, it, it, it speaks of death and so forth. But I just want you to know that everything with God is possible. God gives life, and so if you believe, he can work that special miracle for you. And so we are going to listen to this very special song or prayer song as you focus heavenward. Bodies broken, trouble here and everywhere. Arms that can't reach where they want to somehow. Pastor Thompson, can you lead us to the throne of grace? Thank you very much, my pastor. Loving Lord and Father, Lord, it is a privilege that we can come boldly to the throne of grace where we can obtain mercy. Lord, we pause at this time because heaven is connecting with earth. And sweet prayers are going up. But Lord, in the midst of the chat, in the midst across West Jamaica and Jamaica and the world, the cries of help, the cries for fear, the cries of worry, the cry for cancer is going up to you tonight. And we ask you, O oh God, to come down in our midst, in our midst of trouble, in our midst of pain, in our midst of circumstances, come down, O oh God, and soothe our aching heart. Lord, search through the chat and look at each prayer request. Sandy, for example, O oh God, is struggling with cancer, and when we hear cancer, O oh God, we Think of death, but thanks be to God that you're greater than our circumstances. You're greater than sickness. You're greater than pain. And your love for us knows no bound. And so tonight, O oh God, as the priors ascend, O oh God, may the blessing 
of assurance, may the blessings of love, may the, the blessings of deliverance, may the blessings come down upon us like copious showers of blessing, O oh Father. Lord, there is no other person, there is no other place, there is no other entity, there is no other institution that we can come to, O oh God, save the kingdom of God. We can come to you, O oh God, because you care for us. You have compassion upon us. You love us with an everlasting love. And so, Lord, there is a child. There is a child on the verge of giving up. There is a child on the verge of suicide, O oh God. Come down in their midst. May them, O oh God, receive a message on their phone and the link would be footprints of hope. And they paused and watch, O oh God, because you're still in the business of delivering souls. You're still in the business of breaking the shackles that bind them. You're still in the business, O oh God, of creating path where there is no path, O oh God. You're still in the business of creating ways and means for us to come to you whom to know is life eternal. Yes. Lord, there may be a father. There may be a mother who is tired. They're on the verge of giving up. Challenges at home, challenges at work, O oh God, but you know and you're going to work it out for them tonight. And so I pray, dear Father, in a very special way that as you work it out, let them not take the praise for themselves, but let them, oh God, give all the honor, the glory, and the praise to you, oh God. Let them have an experience that when they share their experience, they will echo to you, oh God. It was because of you, Jesus, why I am here today. And so... Thank you, O oh God, for what you will do. Thank you, O oh God, for breaking the shackles of sin. Thank you, O oh God, for unraveling the plan of salvation to us through your son, Jesus Christ. And most importantly of all, the man of the hour, Pastor Glenn o. Samuels, I pray that a special power, a special anointing will be upon him tonight. And as he preach, O oh God, May men and women cry out after hearing your words, a full surrender, and come to know you whom to know me is life eternal is my asking. In Jesus' sweet and precious name. Amen. 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 Pastor and, uh, Palmer. Almighty God, we continue this moment of prayer by again thanking you for privileging us with this opportunity whereby we can come before your awful throne to extend our hearts to your hands. And even as we extend this moment, we lift up before you, Lord, every individual in the hearing of my voice, every person who has been influenced by this series, The Footprints of Hope, Everyone who has heard the evangelist Glenn Samuels preach night after night, we pray that now on the account of your dynamic power that you will reach out and touch a heart, that heart that is underneath the tree of despair, that heart that is burdened by the ocean of sorrow, that heart, O oh God, that is pummeled by the traffic of division and hatred and pain, that heart that is saddened by the loss of a loved one, that heart, O oh God, that is broken, that heart that is torn between accepting you and continuing on the path to hell. We pray this evening, dear Deliverer, great Redeemer and our God, that you will somehow work a miracle in somebody's life. Some young person right now who's been pressured by their peers, someone, Lord, who doesn't see the end and is caught between life and death. We pray that you will give them hope and may they see your footprints in the sand, dear God. And as I join with Pastor Thompson tonight and everybody else that is praying, we ask, dear Father, 
that as only you can, that you will work a miracle for somebody. That's all we ask, that you manifest yourself, show up and show off in somebody's life. And Lord, we will be careful to give you the glory and the praise. We promise you, Lord, that if you reach out and do something for someone this one time, Father, that we will always trust you and serve you faithfully. And so be with those who are watching wherever they may be right now. And everyone who is in contention for their soul, we ask, dear Lord, that you will step right in and make your presence known. Be the God that we know you can be. And Lord, for somebody, be the God that they need. We pray that you take control and take charge. In Jesus' name, amen. Heavenly Father, we pause it again to give you thanks, knowing that, Lord, when you decree, it comes to pass. And so tonight, one more time, we ask you to take over this worship exercise and may your presence be felt around the globe. Gracious Father, we pray tonight once again you will dispel the darkness from among us. And as your words go forth, individuals will give their hearts to you. By your grace, they'll be translated from darkness to light. Tonight, Lord, we lift up those who are sick. And once again, we pray that you in your divine power will do something for them. Father, we are frail human of dust. We have no control of what is taking place in our body at this time. But as the chief architect of our soul, we ask you to speak to every need right now, every issue. Those with cancer, diabetes, and high blood pressure. Father, the protection of your child and treasure is a charge you have laid on yourself. And so I pray as they go through their issues, their crucible, lift their thoughts above their illnesses and let them see Jesus. Let them recognize that you are able and by faith you will reach out and touch them and something important will happen. Healing will take place in their body. Thank you so much for the privilege once again to hear the dropping of your words. Cover your man's servant and as he speaks again we ask that the gospel will go forth with power and clarity is our asking in Jesus name. Amen. I don't know about you, but I'm looking forward to heaven. I don't know if I could ever understand it. Why life always happens like it does. Even though I know we're only here for a while. How come it never seems like long enough? I don't know just when my time is coming. Still I know God has a plan for me. I don't know what leaving looks like, but I know this. You won't have to wonder where I'll be. know what kind of mansion God's preparing I know this streets of gold I know I'm gonna find all the pain and suffering that I experience in this life it won't be long I leave it all Jesus. 
Jesus promised he would prepare is beyond imagination all the glories we will share and I know Just lift your hands and say, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Wonderful. I'll be there. Do you want to be there? Oh, yes. The book of Revelation says, anyone who has an ear to hear, let him hear what the Spirit has to say to the churches. And night after night, the Spirit of God has been using Pastor Samuel to speak to us. If we want to be there, we must listen to what the Lord himself has been saying to us. And to bring us the bread of life, you already know who it is, right, Sash? Oh, yes. And just in case you're wondering, he is none other than Pastor Glenn Octavius Ezekiel Jeremiah Samuels, <laughs> pulling his stunt, right? And so I implore you tonight to just share this wonderful link. I'm telling you, something life-changing is about to happen. Oh, yes, Kamara. Well, it's, uh, I know, Kamara, that music... It's powerful, it transcends boundaries geographically, culturally, and all the alleys you can think of. Right. And so it has the ability to lift the spirit and soothe the soul. And right now, just before Pastor Samuel's come, we'll be having the, a, a special musical item right. by the Anointed Ones. We encourage you to share the link, as Kamara has said. Be the minister of the gospel. And if you cannot understand the spoken words, I am sure that the music will speak to your heart. And so tonight, we're inviting you to sing along if you know the song and be blessed by the Anointed Ones. Amen. You cry till tears fall like rain. You try to overcome, failing time and time again. But friends, Sometimes you cry till tears fall like rain. You try to overcome, failing time and time again. But friends, don't be discouraged. Just hold your head up high. The only time you fail is the last time you try. 
if it's on the Jesus is able to get you past your past. The song says, don't stop believing till the victory is yours. For it's under the blood, you'll get over the storm. Praise God. Sometimes. 
lies you hurt oh yes from the guilt of yesterday oh, and you try to forget but the memories they remain Jesus but when you. Jesus he forgives you and he forgets your sin then forgive yourself just put your trust in him if it's it is if it's under the blood you'll get over it would you say amen thank you I don't know if you find as much meaning and joy in the songs as I do I could just listen just to the songs alone and go home I said I could just listen just to the songs and go home rejoicing we thank God for his amazing grace and I want to bless his name this evening and uh, we, we heard from the foster triplets that this is going to be their last evening. And I, I'm not sure where they're standing, but I want them to come and stand right beside me for a moment. Uh, I'm not sure where they're at, but, but it, has been, it has been for me a very rewarding and enriching encounter ministering and sharing with my three daughters. And I want to issue a warning to all of the young men who may have eyes on them. I want to issue a warning to all of the young men who may have eyes on them. Whoever they tell me about, you're going to have to recite the Bible from Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy, and Joshua. You'll have to close your eyes and recite the 2300 days prophecy. You'll have to write an examination on Revelation from 1 to 22. And if you score an A in all of the above, then I'll give you another assignment. But I <laughs> thank you for the confirmation. I want to thank God for his hand on these three and on their parents. What do you say? Thank you. And if, if you have been blessed, I want to ask you, would you stand and put your hands together as we thank God for them, as we, 
as we give God thanks for his blessings on them, as we reaffirm our love for them, and they stand as committed. And I have only one threat, not, I have only one promise for them. I have only one promise. You say it's a threat, I say it's a promise. If you leave the church, me kill you first. Well, thank you. You've been a great blessing, and may God's blessings be upon you. And we shall do it again. Thank you so much. They have an assignment in Kingston, and uh, that's the reason. They, and they had the assignment before I gave them an assignment. That's the only reason I'm letting them go. That's the only reason I'm letting them go. When I spoke with them, I know they had the assignment. But thank you so much. And uh, I'm going to ask my friends in the chat, if you have been blessed by them, well, type whatever you want to type in the chat to know, so we can know. The, I see the hands. I see the stuff racing. Thank God for you. And uh, you may be seated in the presence of God. I want to welcome the Vice President of the Jamaica Union Conference, Ministerial Secretary, uh, son of St. Elizabeth. Now let me wheel and come again. I want to welcome the son of St. Elizabeth because that's first. It is, it is after that comes all the others. And I want to welcome to this place our friend and brother, Dr. Joseph Ezekiel Augustus Zachariah. Any more, Kamara? And, 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 yes, uh, uh, all of those names plus, plus tax. I, I wasn't here early enough. I'm not sure if you heard his voice, but I'm going to ask him. He, he spoke. I don't know if he spoke. All right. He spoke. Thank you so much. And um, I want to thank him for joining us this evening as we fellowship together. I met some wonderful people today. I hope they're watching. Uh, my sister-in-law took me to the, the Hague. If I can't preach tonight, uh, uh, Carolyn and her husband took me to a place and gave me too much to eat on my way back. Uh, and so, so let, me t let me say, first of all, I, I was walking, uh, and because I didn't want to be stopped every time, I wore a hat. I, I didn't have on a jacket. I had on sneakers. I had on sneakers. I had on a hat. I had my shirt out, my pants. I said, well, nobody could recognize me. And I'm walking looking at cows and goats and rabbits and plants and stuff. You know what the Hague Agricultural Show is all about. I stopped here and there, and I'm, I'm enjoying my incognito stuff when all of a sudden I, 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 a man started staring at me, and he said, you look like. I said, some people say I look like him. He said, but it's you. Uh, and uh, that was the rest of it. But I want to thank my Pentecostal friends. He is from, I think he said, Ottawa in Canada. And he said, well, I watch you every Saturday. I watch you. And, I, and his wife said, I can't get enough of you. And I said, well, I hope he's not jealous. Of you. But I want to thank my Pentecostal friends that I met today and all the others that I met today at the Hague Agricultural Show. Thank you for watching. Thank you for your love. Thank you for your kind thoughts. And then on my way home, uh, uh, my sister-in-law took me to a restaurant just up on Top Road uh, beside Grande View, and, and I, I won't tell you what they served me, but, but it was long. It was steamed. I didn't tell you anything. I, I'm just saying to you that they took me to some place, and, and, and as I was going to my seat, you know, Pastor Rose, uh, I got a message. The owner of the restaurant said, uh, the pastor's meal is on the house. And so I had to go look at him. And, and uh, again, I want to thank God for the persons who have been watching, who have been blessed. And I want to say thanks to the owner of the, I don't want to mispronounce the, the name of the restaurant. It's either Peppers or Steppers. Peppers, who told you? <laughs> okay, Peppers. Uh, and I, I want to tell you that uh, everything tasted good at Peppers. Everything tasted good at peppers, and I enjoyed even the pepper on the thing they served me. The thing, the thing they served me, I chose to call it swimming vegetables. Are you listening to me? I chose to call it swimming vegetables, baptized in okra and uh, stuff and stuff. I, I just want to thank the owner of, of Pepper's Restaurant for his kindness. But we want to testify tonight about, you know, so I was sitting at the table when a lady looked at me and said, 
you look like? I said, how many persons am I going to look like? And, and if my friend from Portmore, if you're watching from your hotel room, she did say to me that her daughters like to visit the church that I belong to. I hope that they will continue visiting and that she too will also join her daughters. We thank God for the spreading of the everlasting gospel. What do you say? We bless his name that he could give to us unworthy sinners this glorious privilege to be a part of being co-laborers together with him in spreading earth's final message to a lost generation. This is God's last call. And tonight we come to our final Wednesday night. I pray it will be a blessing to you. And now, would you stand with me for the last time on a Wednesday night here in Footprints 3. And I want you to sing with all you've got. I love you, Lord, for your mercy never fail. I love you, Lord. Do you love him tonight? Then sing the song. For your mercy. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, I will sing of the goodness of God. Of God. Yes. All my life He's been, been faithful. faithful. What a faithful God He is. So good. so good with every breath, with every breath that I, made, oh, I will sing, I will sing of, the goodness of the goodness of God. Of God. Oh, He's been good to us. Your goodness is running after. It's running after. It's running My life. With my life laid down, I surrender now. I give I you give everything. You everything. Your goodness is running after. It's running after me. Our loving Father and our God, we do not deserve the least of your mercy. And as we stand on the very threshold of eternity, we stand in awe at your amazing grace. And we wonder, God, who would not love a God like you? From everlasting to everlasting, you are God. There has been no successful challenge to your divine incumbency. You stand complete with life unborrowed and underived. You have been our help in ages past. In times of earthquakes and sorrow. In times of failures and disappointments and discouragement. In times of famine and disaster. In times of violence, God, humankind have called upon your name and they've discovered that the name of the Lord is a strong tower. That the righteous can run therein and be saved. Lord God of heaven, you've been our help in ages past. And you are still a present help in the time of trouble. And so we come on this final Wednesday night. In a world sinking in trouble. In a world being carried along by the avalanche of sin. Yet God in this ever-deepening, widening ocean of destructive calamities, you have thrown out a lifeboat to the side within the reach of those who want to be saved. We pray, Almighty God, that as you give the wind a mighty voice tonight, would you allow the Holy Spirit to stand up beside us to take up residence 
beside a cell phone in the hand of a young man, beside a tablet card in the, in the hand of a young lady, beside a computer where some folk tonight are sitting down in groups, beside a screen at the roadside, a television screen in a room bar, we pray, God, you whose presence is here, there, and everywhere. You are the omnipresent, omnipotent God. Show up tonight in some place, in some bedroom, in some living room. Show up tonight, God, where, where your word is being declared, where somebody is watching melt hard hearts, bend stubborn will, open up the minds of those who have a desire to trust and obey. We pray, thou living God of Israel, that you would allow your will be to be done tonight. Hold the devil in check. Give salvation to every repentant person. Touch these sinful lips one more time and make them worthy for the preaching of your word. For your glory, for the fulfillment of your purpose, may your kingdom come and may your will be done, we pray and say thanks in Jesus' name and let God's children say, Amen. Amen. I have my fingers tonight as I then want to misquote the text, so before, while they were singing, I looked for it just to be sure I remember where it was. It is Romans chapter 15 and verse 4. And the text simply say, For whatsoever things were written before were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. For whatsoever things were written before time were written for our learning that we through patience and comfort of the holy scriptures might have hope. I want to read it one more time in your hearing, for whatsoever things were written before were written for our learning, that we through patience and comfort of the Holy Scriptures might have hope. I want to use tonight as a topic a lesson from history. A lesson from history. A lesson from history. I read to you just now Romans 15 and verse 4. And now I'd like to add to that 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 11. 1 Corinthians 10 and verse 11 speaking of Generations that have gone before us said, No, all these things happen to them for examples, and they are written for our admonition upon whom the end of the world is come. I'd like to read that again in your hearing. Speaking of those who've lived before us, speaking of those who've gone before us, if ever you are tempted to treat with apparent impunity the sins of this age, then turn back the hands of time and look back in history and see what happened to men and nations who dared to flex their fists in the face of God, who dared to treat with scant regard the Word of God. And Paul says, the judgments of God the stuff that happened to them, the destruction of Sodom and Gomorrah, the flood on the Andalusians, all of those stuff that happened, he said, all these things happened to them for examples and they are written down for our admonition 
written down for our warning, written down for our instruction, because it is upon us. There has never been another generation so close to the second coming of Jesus like this one. There has never been another people so close to the coming of the Lord. Now, can I tell you something? You don't have to believe in God for him to be God. He is God whether you believe in him, yes or no. You don't have to believe in this Bible for it to be the word of God. It is the word of God because God says it is. And whether you believe it, yes or no, every word in this book will be fulfilled. Are you listening to me? And so he said, all of these things happen to those who've lived before us and they are written for our admonition upon whom the end of the world has come. I want to talk with us about a lesson from history. I have a minor degree in history. I love history. But history is not a place for permanent residence, said Pastor Michael Harvey. History is a place of reference, but not a place of permanent residence. We can't live in the past. We learn from yesterday so that we may take precaution and make the right move for today. I want to talk with you about a young man in the Bible that you've heard about, you've heard preach about, you may have read about him yourself. His name is Belshazzar. His grandfather, Nebuchadnezzar. And you will find in the King James Version, there's a peculiar way that the Bible would make reference to descendants. He would refer to them as the son of. They may even be the grandson or the great grandson, but there is this peculiar reference, the son of so-and-so. And so, uh, to help you understand the background, Israel disobeyed God. Israel, the people whom God had chosen, the people whom God had selected, the descendant of Abraham that God set his hand on, that God said, in you shall all the families of the earth be blessed. Israel disobeyed. Can I talk to my church? Can I talk to church folk? God can take back what God has given. You can lose your blessing. Hello there, you can lose your blessing if you persist in willful disobedience. You can lose the blessing that God has always wanted you to have. Israel was punished by the heathen because they treated with scant regard. They took God for granted. They thought that by merely going to the temple and doing the rites of the temple that they were protected. Our salvation is not guaranteed by church membership. It is by a living relationship with the living God. It's by obedience to the will of God, by acceptance of Christ as Savior, surrendering our lives to Him and seeking His grace daily, seeking His strength daily. Yesterday's power is gone. Are you listening to me? Yesterday's victory is past. Every day we need a fresh supply of amazing grace. Every day we need a fresh anointing because every level you get, there's a new devil on every level. Are you listening to me? And the devil will not fold his arm and watch you float into God's kingdom. He's going to give you hell down here if he can't get you to the other one. Are you listening to me? So Belshazzar knew the lesson from history. God humbled his grandfather and we, we spoke the last time about uh, Nebuchadnezzar autobiography he spoke about his own conversion but he spoke also about his own stubbornness now here his grandson you see Belshazzar's father was the rightful ruler he was out on war business expanding the kingdom and his son who was vice regent, co-regent was left on the throne. Later in the story, when, when Belshazzar was making the offer of making someone a third ruler, he knew he was number two. His daddy was number one and here he was and the Bible said in Daniel chapter 5 and verse 1, he had a party. He had a what? 
The Bible said he had a great feast. He had a great, and all of the rulers, all the lords, all his concubines, his wives, all the big shots that were there. You know what he did? He did the opposite of what his grandfather did. When his grandfather conquered Jerusalem, when the temple was burned, his grandfather took the golden vessels, the communion vessels, but he didn't use them. He locked them away. He locked them away. He knew, he knew that there was something about the God of heaven. You want to understand repeatedly, God gave Nebuchadnezzar information about himself. Remember the issue of the three Hebrew boys? When Nebuchadnezzar asked, who is this God who shall deliver you? Well, he saw him and he asked the question, did we not cast three men in the fire? He said, I see four and the form of the fourth is like the son of God. Are you listening to me? And he became converted. He wrote, and you ought to read Daniel 4. He locked away God's holy vessels. Now let's get into our word tonight. Daniel 5 verse 1. Belshazzar the king made a great feast to a thousand of his lords. These were the parliamentarians, the senators. These were the rulers. And he drank wine before the thousand, meaning in the presence of the thousand. But the, the king would be the one to taste the wine first. Now listen to me, the Bible said, Belshazzar, whilst he tasted the wine. I heard one preacher said he was not drunk. I don't know if he could have an excuse if he was drunk. Whilst he tasted the wine, in plain Jamaican parlance for my overseas friends, he was just feeling sweet. Somebody said, when, when the liquor is in, your wisdom goes out. When the liquor is in, and I can't understand why humankind would put stuff in their system that would lead them into altered states of consciousness that would alter their consciousness, that would, would render their senses almost null and void. Hmm? My, in my country, I, 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 I grew up in the Republic of Burnt Savannah. I said I grew up in the Republic of Burnt Savannah in St. Elizabeth. I, I, and this man got drunk. He, he, was, uh, he was heading home and uh, below my house was a man who was rearing some big white pigs. You know the ones that, that they grow fast uh, with, 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 with some special feed that make them mature? And when you eat it, you mature as fast as the pig themselves? Now he, 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 he's heading home and he's stone drunk. He stumbled. Where did he fall? He fell right in the sty beside the roadside. Way up in the ear of the morning, some folk were just coming home and, he, and they heard him saying, Mrs. Go up some more. And the hog said, woof, woof, woof. Anything that would make you lay down beside a sow and think you're in your bed, something is wrong with that thing and something wrong with your head. Are you listening to me? Belshazzar, whilst he tasted the wine, he commanded to bring the golden and silver vessels that his father, Nebuchadnezzar, had taken out of the temple which was in Jerusalem that the king, his princes, his wives, his concubines might drink wine therein. When you don't have any regard for God, you don't regard the things of God. If you have no regard for God, you'll have no regard for the commandments of God. If you love the Lord God, you will love the word of God. Are you listening to me? If you have regard for God, you'll respect whatever he tells you. You'll respect the stuff that's consecrated to him. In my boyhood days, thieves would never break into church. I said in my boyhood days, thieves would never break into church. Now they do stuff in church, I wouldn't tell you behind the sacred desk. No respect for God. No we, we have come to an age of barefaced, outright, flagrant disregard for God and the things of God. They brought in the golden vessels that were taken out of the temple of the house of God at Jerusalem and the king. His princes, can you read with me? The king, 
His princes. Read with me. His who? Who next? Those are the spare tires. Drank in them. Look at the next verse. They drank wine and did what? I can't hear you. I still can't hear you. They drank wine and praised the gods of gold and of silver and of brass, of wood and of stone. They drank wine and praised the gods of gold, silver, wood, stone. These gods, they have eyes but they couldn't see. They have ears but they couldn't hear. Their dumb God could not hear one word of their praise and their doxology. Neither could they deliver in moments of trial. Listen to me carefully. When you know better, when you know the will of God, when you know the word of God, when you've seen the hand of God in the lives of others and you treat that with disdain, you are only postponing judgment, but you don't know that it is hanging over your head. Are you listening to me? There's something that bothered me. The first four words in the next verse says, in that same hour. The party had just started. The music and the dancing and the high pitch fever sinfulness is in high gear in that same hour, the banquet hall, 160 feet long by 60 feet high, stately banquet hall, lights were dim, candlesticks only against the wall. And I used to wonder, why is it that some dance hall are dark? Something just, I was in New York City and uh, maybe she's watching so I can't tell the full story. But, but she came in deep distress and uh, sometimes the devil leads you down a path and the time you're going down the path, you're going down with friends and, and it's only when the lights are out and you're left in your lonesomeness that you realize how far you've drifted. She came, drowning in remorse and regret. The sad thing is she was pregnant. She didn't know who the father was. It happened in the nightclub. Didn't even see his face. He was drunk and she was drunk. And the promised land wasn't properly covered up. Easy access. When the liquor is in, your judgment is out. The Bible said in the same hour came forth fingers of a man's hand and wrote over against the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall. The hand came right at the place where light was. Listen to me. If you flex your fist in the face of God, he may just turn up at your party without invitation. Well, did I say without invitation? You would have invited him by your barefaced sinfulness. But when he comes at that time, he isn't coming with mercy. It's because you have invited judgment on your own head. The Bible said in the same hour there came for the fingers of, of a man's hand wrote about the candlestick upon the plaster of the wall and the king saw it. Who saw it? To whom much is given of him is much required. Maybe the others didn't see it because they might not have had as much information about God as this young man. Maybe his lords and his concubines didn't see it because their knowledge of God was not as equipped and fulsome as he was. He knew better. And hear me, God will confront you based on his revelation to you. 
At the times of your ignorance, God winks at that. That's Acts 17.30. But now he commands all men everywhere to repent. And the Bible said in Hebrews 7, Behold, now is the day of salvation. If you hear his voice, harden not your heart. The king saw the hand that wrote. The king who defied God. The king who was praising the gods of gold and silver. The king who had given command to bring in God's golden vessels. He saw the hand. And the next verse said, then the king's countenance was changed. It's funny, he was dancing a few moments ago. It's funny, he was carrying on. It's funny, he was insulting God. It's funny how the music and his companions were all in defiance, but now his countenance changed. Are you listening to me? Hear me, young man. You can flex your fist in the face of God, but when you lay on the hospital bed because you've been broken up in a drunken accident, your countenance going to change. I said, your countenance going to change. You flex your fist in God's face. You've heard the call to repentance, but you have no time for God. And suddenly, you discover you are facing death your countenance is going to change. Hear me, young lady. You may have money. You may have wealth. But your countenance is going to change when you get to that moment when the doctor said, there's nothing more I can do for you. It's not your money that can help you. You flex your fist in the face of God. You've turned your back on the only healer of all your diseases. You flex your fist. And in your defiance, you've rejected the voice of God. Hear the preacher tonight. Your countenance will change. Then was his countenance changed and his thoughts troubled him. I don't want you to rush past this. His thoughts troubled him. You see when you know better? His thoughts troubled him. He had heard about this mysterious tremendum He'd heard about this awesome God who has been operating through Daniel and Shadrach and Meshach. Daniel was still alive. Nebuchadnezzar was dead, but Daniel was still alive. Hear me carefully. His thoughts troubled him. Because somewhere in the frontal lobe, somewhere in the seat of intelligence, he now begins to bring to the fore the information he has received about this awesome God whom he has been resisting. His thoughts troubled him. His conscience is bothering him. Something is tearing up in his mind because now he knows this is not the work of man this is not the work of an artist merely and the joints of his loins were loose his knees begin knocking against each other are you listening to me only a moment earlier this stout macho six pack i don't know how tall he was this king on the throne, wielding authority, now his knees begin to knock. When you come face to face with the judgment of God, you will know that you're just man. He's in charge. When you come face to face with the God who's been calling you to repent, the God whom you've been resisting, when you come face to face with his judgment, you will know that he's in charge. He's in charge. The king, I love the King James, loaded words. The king cried aloud. A moment earlier, he was laughing aloud. A moment earlier, he was drinking loud and drinking proud. But now, he's crying aloud. I said a moment earlier, he was drinking loud and drinking proud. But now, he's crying aloud. Sooner, and the worst thing to happen to you is to cry out to God and he turn his back. I said the worst thing that could happen to you is for God to get to the place 
after his spirit has been calling and pleading and he says all right all right since you don't want me have it your way have it your way have it your way what did God say to now generation he said my spirit shall not always strive with man I'll strive I'll call I'll plead but my spirit will not always strive with man he cried aloud you know the funny thing is to seek godly counsel from ungodly people it's difficult for a man who doesn't know God to tell you the will of God the things of God can only be rightly interpreted by those who are in connection with God. And that's why you ought to be careful who your teachers are. Are you listening to me? I said the things of God can only be rightly interpreted by those who are in connection with God. And that's why you must be careful as to who your teachers are. Are you listening to me? Amos 3 and verse 7, the Bible said, Surely the Lord will do nothing, but he reveals his secrets to whom? To his servants, the prophets. Acts 5, 32, but Peter said, and we are his witnesses, and so also is the Holy Ghost whom God has given to those that obey him. Listen to me carefully. He cried aloud. He bring in his Chaldeans. He bring in his astrologers. He brought in all of those he thought must be able to handle it. All of the wise men of Babylon he said, if you read this, if you can show me the interpretation, I'll clothe you with scarlet, I'll give you gold, and I'll make you the third ruler in the kingdom. I told you earlier, he was not number one. His daddy was number one. He's number two. Now he's saying, if you can read it, I'll make you the third ruler in the kingdom. A man on the verge of destruction You've got to understand there are some troubles that your money can get you out of. There are some troubles, young lady, that your nice curves and contours can get you out of. There are some issues that your sexy shape can get you out of. Are you listening to me? Some folks feel they can buy their way through life because they're good looking. But when you're in trouble, you're going to have to learn. Pretty looks done, man, and he can help you. So hear me carefully. Listen to me. There are some stuff in life that good looks and money can help you with. And so while trouble reigns, God will never leave himself without a weakness. In a world like this, with religious plurality, God has a remnant church. In a world like this, where folk are challenging the Bible, God has a remnant church. God has a, a, a mission-driven movement. God has some folk who will stand up like the brave and tell it just like it, I-T-I-S. Are you listening to me? In a world like this, God has those who will stand up for truth. Are you listening to me? And so in the midst of his trouble, his wise men couldn't help him. His palm readers couldn't help him. But somebody said, there's a man in your kingdom. I'm glad. There's a man in your kingdom. Now, now the last time I checked, his grandfather had made Daniel the president of the council of the wise men. When he made Daniel the president, Daniel said to Nebuchadnezzar, I want my three friends, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, to be, to be with me also. And they also were given high position. But notice, if you will, Daniel was not at the party. Neither was Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. And, and I think there could be one of two possible reasons. One, maybe somebody said, King, go invite those Saturday-keeping people at the party. Somebody may have said, King, if you bring them here, you can't serve hard liquor. If you bring them here, king, you can't play a certain kind of music. Nebuchadnezzar had exalted Daniel 
to a lofty position. Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego were also. How come they weren't here? The second issue could be, maybe they chose not to go. Either way, for me, it's good news. And I want to talk to Adventists and Christian young people. There are some parties, even if you are invited, the Christ in you should tell you, turn down that invitation. I said, Christian people, there are some wild parties. If you are invited, the Christ in you should tell you there are some places you can't go. There are some stuff you can't drink. Are you listening to me? The Christ in you ought to be standing up and showing out. Are you listening to me? Because you are a royal priesthood. You are a peculiar people. The trouble I have, the trouble I have is that there is too much <laughs> Hear me carefully. Them no start tax this yet. And the last time I checked, I feel me mouth. No, I'm paying no taxes for it. The trouble with a lot of us, I shouldn't say us, because I'm not young anymore. The trouble with a lot of young Christian folk. They have no spinal tenacity, no backbone. And, and, and so sometimes because of peer pressure or fear or because of material stuff, they have low standards. Mm? They go to any place, they do anything, they dress anyhow. Are you listening to me? Good Lord, I'm in the wrong place. I'm an old-fashioned preacher. But I have an old-fashioned Bible. Are you listening to me? God is looking for God-fearing Christian folk who will not be ashamed to say, I'm a child of God and I can't dress like that. I'm a child of God and I won't dress like that. I'm a child of God. I won't go to your party. I'm a child of God. I can't drink your liquor. Are you listening to me? But sometimes in order to be accepted, God didn't make you just to fit in. He made you to stand out. Stand up. Stand up for Jesus. He's soldiers of the cross. Lift high his right. We are too close to the coming of the Lord. The world need to know what a true child of God ought to look like. But some of us, even at our own Christian party. Talking about hard stuff. We serve hot stuff. We serve hard liquor. Are you listening to me? Some of us even at our Christian party. I mean the kind of songs. The kind of stuff. What if God were to show up in your birthday party? What if God were to show up at your party are you listening to me there's too much of the world inside the church <clears throat> Lord have mercy the Bible said there's a man in your kingdom we don't like him <laughs> that's why I'm not here there's a man in your kingdom it, 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 and they said there's a man in your kingdom in whom is the spirit of the holy God. Listen, earlier they were praising the gods of gold and wood and silver and brass and stone. But now they said, there's a man in your kingdom in whom is the spirit not of your gods of gold or silver or wood or brass. But the spirit of the holy God is in him. They ought to know who you are. They might not like you, but the Christ in you commands that you live a certain way. Are you listening to me? He said, let your light so shine. I'm preaching tonight to those who are just baptized. There are some places you can't go and some stuff you can't do and you ought to know things are different now. Something happened to you because you've given your heart to Jesus. You've given your heart to Jesus. You are fully sold out. Are you listening to me? Ah, and they began now to tell the king some stuff. Let me run fast. Let me run fast. The next verse I want to read with you. 
The Bible said, the Bible said, then was Daniel brought in. He wasn't there before. He was brought in. And the king, watch this. I don't rush past words in the text. And the king spake and said to him, are you that Daniel? Look at the definite demonstrative adjective pointing out the per Are you that Daniel? Which is of the children of captivity. Now, now I'm going to play with something here. Number one, he could be trying to insult Daniel. Careful what you read now, slave boy. Are you the Daniel who come from captivity? Careful what you say, slave boy. Are you that Daniel? And look at the times he said it. Are you the Daniel which are of the children of captivity whom the king, my father, brought out of Jewry? The next verse. The next verse said, I have heard of you that the spirit of God is in you and that light and understanding and excellent wisdom is found in you. Belshazzar know him. Belshazzar says, I heard of you, light, understanding, the spirit of the Holy God is in you. Now the wise men I brought in couldn't read the stuff. And he said again, I have even heard of you that the spirit of God is in you. Light and understanding is in you. Excellent wisdom is in you. Look at verse 17. Look at verse 17. Ah, uh, come with me, son. Let me, let me, let me. He said, I have heard of you. I'm going to Daniel. I'm, I'm going to Daniel chapter 5. Now, we were in 13 to 16. So let me pick some things from my Bible here. 13 to 16, he was brought in. The king said, are you that Daniel of captivity? Verse 14, I have heard of you. Verse 16, I have heard of you. He is repeating that he is not ignorant of who Daniel is. Then comes verse 17. Then Daniel said to the king, before... I read and tell you what you want to hear. Keep your gifts. I'm not for sale. I love that. I love that. You ought to tell the world you're not for sale. I know that life can become pressuring. I know when you've got bills to pay. I know when your money is acting funny and the devil sets you up the hardest thing is for the broke person to see money and say no to it. But you would have so much self-respect. You would have so much dignity. Can I be my real Jamaican self? If I were female, I said if I were female, before I do some stuff, I'll hug up mango tree and go back to God the same way I come down here. Are you listening to me? You ought to have so much respect for yourself. You ought to have value on yourself. Uh-uh. Remember the old Jamaican song? Tell me a kiggle instead market. Everybody come feel up, feel up. Not a quarter. You're not Linstead market, Aki. Value yourself. Are you listening to me? So Daniel said, keep your gifts. Keep your money. But I'm going to tell you what God says anyway. He said, keep your gifts. He said, keep your money. I'm not for sale. I didn't come here to, to, to tell you. No, 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 you can't buy this. Daniel said, yes, you just said I am from Jewry. You just said I am from captivity. But my life is in the hand of God. Are you listening to me? My life is in God's hand. So king, keep your money. 
Give your gifts to who you want to give it to. But before I read the stuff on the wall, let me give you a lesson in history. And that's our topic tonight, a lesson in history. Hear the lesson. Hear the lesson. To whom much is given, of him is much required. Hear the lesson. Those who know better ought to do better. Hear the lesson. Hear the lesson. If you know God and not serve him, you're doing yourself a great injustice. Hear the lesson. Hear the lesson. It's dangerous to see the truth and walk in error. It's dangerous to see the light and walk in darkness. It's dangerous to know God and not serve him. It's dangerous to hear the call to trust and obey and still stay in disobedience. It's dangerous to hear the call to repent and be baptized and still resist the call. So Daniel said, keep your money. But before I read the writing, let me give you a lesson in history. Daniel said, let your gifts be to yourself. I will read the writing to the king. I'll make known the interpretation. The next verse. He said, he said, O thou king, the most high God. Now listen, listen, Daniel, Daniel said, listen, it's not your gods of gold and silver. The most high God gave your grandfather a kingdom. He didn't get it because of his good looks. Every blessing you have is a gift from God. He caused the rain to fall upon the just and on the unjust. Every breath you take, you are the recipients of the mercy and the goodness of God. Are you listening to me? And it's dangerous to receive God's blessing, to take God's goodness and live in sin continually with it. Someday God will cut you down. O oh, thou king, the most high God, Gave Nebuchadnezzar, your father, a kingdom and majesty and honor and power. Daniel said, I'm giving you a lesson in history. Let me read it for you. He said, listen, listen. God blessed your grandfather. God gave him the kingdom. In verse 19, because of his majesty, that he gave him all people, all nations, and he's walking him through the history of his own kingdom. And you come to verse 20, but when your grandfather's heart was lifted up and his spirit was hardened in pride, he was deposed from his kingly throne. They took his glory from him. He was driven from the sons of men. His heart was made like the beast. His dwelling place with the wild donkeys. They fed him with grass like a donkey. Until he knew that the most high God rules in the kingdom of men. God will cut you down until you come to your senses. And some people will never come to their senses. Are you listening to me? Listen to me. Daniel said, King, you are not ignorant. You are not ignorant. It's written in the history book of the very kingdom on whose throne you now sit. The hand of God was on your grandfather. It's written. Your grandfather, when he came to his senses, when he humbled his heart, when he surrendered to Almighty God, he wrote his own testimony. You know it. You've heard it. Your grandfather said, there is no God like the sovereign God of heaven and earth. And he said, listen to verse 22. But thou... His son Belshazzar, you have not humbled your heart even though you know all of these things. That's the sermon tonight. You have not humbled your heart. It is not because you don't know. It is not because you're ignorant. You've seen the light. You've heard the truth. You've heard that the seventh day is God's Sabbath. You've heard that God never changed it. You've heard that the prophets never did. 
You've heard from the record of history and prophecy that the Roman church altered God's commandments. You've heard that even in the earth made new from one Sabbath to another, all flesh shall come to worship before the Lord God. You've heard in the last book of the Bible, the 22nd chapter and the 14th verse, Blessed are those who keep the commandments of God. You've heard from James, the brother of our Lord, when he wrote in James 2, 8 through 10, if you keep the whole law and offend in one point, you're guilty. And though you know these things, I'm not just talking to Belshazzar. He's dead. I'm giving you a lesson from history. But Daniel said to Belshazzar, before I read the handwriting, before I tell you what you brought me here to tell you, there's something that God want me to tell you. And me going to tell you first what God tell me say, before me tell you what you want to hear. Belshazzar, you know better. Belshazzar, the judgment of God has come because you've sinned against the light you know. You have rejected the truth you have heard. You've turned your back on the knowledge that God has sent you. You've chosen to stay in disobedience. Though repeatedly God brought you to a place where you could hear and obey. And thou, his son, O Belshazzar. Is there somebody in the chat tonight? Like Belshazzar, you know better. Is there somebody by one of these sites listening to my voice? Like Belshazzar, you know better. You've heard the commandments of God. You've heard the truth. You've seen the light. Then I ought to tell you, Proverbs 29 and verse 1 said, He that being often reproved hardens his neck, he shall be destroyed suddenly and there shall be no remedy. Proverbs 29 verse 1. He that being often reproved. He who's been often reproved. Hardens his neck. It's dangerous to hear truth and stay in error. It's dangerous to see the light. And remain in darkness. It's dangerous to hear about the Bible Sabbath. And stay with the commandments and traditions of mankind. And Daniel said. You have not humbled your heart Belshazzar. What was the first text I read to you? Whatsoever things were written. Were written for our learning. That we through patience and comfort of the scriptures might have hope. What was the second text I read to you? These things happen to them and they are written for our example upon whom the end of the world has come. I'm done. But here, I thought about entitling the sermon, Save the Last Dance for Me. His last dance was for the devil and not for God. David danced before the Lord God in joy and satisfaction for what God has done for Israel. Belshazzar had his last dance with the devil. Belshazzar's last dance was in a, an ungodly party with hard liquor, ungodly friends. His last dance was saved for the devil. And right there on the dance floor, his blood flowed. Let me read the last couple of verses in the chapter and I'm done. The Bible said, I'm reading Daniel chapter 5. The very last verse said, that night, that very night, Belshazzar, the king of the Chaldeans, was slain. That night, that very night, listen to me, when the party got started, the text says, in that same hour, the hand of God came writing. 
I don't know how long it took for Daniel to get there. I don't know how long it took for the wise men to try and fail. All I know is that the minute they saw the handwriting, the music stopped. The trembling stopped. The party crashed. And the Bible said, in that night, oh Lord have mercy. He never had a chance to get back home. In that night, in that very night, where will you die? In that night, the night of defiance against God, the night of rejection. Somebody here tonight, the spirit of the living God is speaking to your heart right now. You're not yet baptized. Or maybe you're a backslider. Maybe you've drifted from the fold. Maybe tonight you're here and you used to be a child of God, but for some reason, I don't know, maybe you got pregnant, maybe for money, maybe for job, maybe, 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 for whatever reason, you've drifted, you've drifted, you've drifted. And I hear an old song that I've wandered far away from God, but now I'm coming home. The paths of sin too long I've tried. Now you've drifted and you've drifted so far from shore, but you want to sing throughout the lifeline someone is sinking today like Peter you want to cry Lord save me I have a few cards left I don't know if I have enough but I'm going to ask them to give every the reason I give you a card even if you don't sign it you can't tell God you never get a chance in this night the last Wednesday night I serve you a summons from the Holy Spirit. God want you saved. You're summoned tonight to make a decision because it's dangerous to see the light and walk in darkness. It's dangerous to hear the call and remain in disobedience. It's dangerous right now. I'm not asking you. I'm telling you. If you're not yet surrendered. There's a voice calling you. There's a voice calling you. There's a voice calling you. Christ is knocking on your heart. Right now. Wherever you are. Whichever country you're in. You're hearing the word of God tonight. Hear the preacher. Hear the preacher. Others who know less than what you know, are rejoicing in Jesus, baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. The thief on the cross, whilst he's dying, he listened to the conversation around the cross. He looked at the man in the middle. He turned his eyes so he could see a little bit. He heard the stuff. And he recognized the Savior is right beside him. The Savior is right beside you tonight. Listen to me. Daniel said, Belshazzar, you know better. Backslider, you know better. Belshazzar says, Son the worshiper, you've heard enough. You know better. In vain do they worship teaching for doctrines the commandments of men you know better God never changed the Sabbath you know better what will you do with what you know in that night the media Persian army came marching a drunken king even if by then he wasn't stone drunk but his liquor was in the cup. He had insulted God by pouring unholy wine in God's holy vessel. And there is no trace of repentance. He saw the handwriting on the wall, but his probation was closed. He saw the handwriting on the wall, but how do I know his probation was closed? If you listen to what the handwriting said, your kingdom, your days are numbered. You're weighed in the balances. You're found wanting. You're done. You're done. Belshazzar! You're weighed in the balances and you come up short. 
Belshazzar, God has weighed your actions against the knowledge you have. And your actions have come up short. You know better than how you're living. You know more than how you're acting. You heard enough and you're still staying disobedient. I'm done. I closed my Bible. I'm done. I'm done. But could it be that God's not done with you yet? I don't know if they have enough cards. I've asked them to hand it and I assume they don't have enough. But hear me tonight. Hear me tonight. Cards are no cards. I won't challenge you to make a decision for your salvation. While they sing, if you're here or you're there, in Barbados, in Canada, in the U.S., while they sing tonight, make that decision. Miles behind me. Make that decision. Too many You've come too far. Are true. You know too much. Too many you heard enough. Help me to. And maybe Remember, you've struggled enough for you to know. There is too much to gain. God's taking you to a better place than where you are right now. But you need to make a decision. Too many sunsets lies behind the mountain. You've come too far. You know too much. You've heard enough. You've heard enough. Make a decision tonight. Make a decision tonight. You've heard enough. The hand of God, the hand of God, the hand of God is writing on your wall tonight. The hand of mercy is outstretched to you. The hand of God is reaching out to you. You know too much to stay in error. You know too much to stay in the doctrines of man. You know too much. Backslider, you don't have a mountain that God can't help you climb over. Take a card tonight. Get a pen. But card are no card. Make a decision in your heart by the grace of God. Somebody is praying for you. Somebody is praying for you. Make a decision tonight. I said make a decision tonight. It's light or darkness. It's Christ or the devil. It's the world or the kingdom of God. Listen to me. It's the world or the kingdom of God. You've come too far. I was struggling. You've come too far. You've heard enough. You've heard the call to repentance. You've heard the call to repentance. But I thank you in the name of Jesus. Don't say no. There is don't turn him down tonight. I said, don't turn him down tonight. The Lord God is calling you. Take that card. Put a card in every hand. Put a card in, in every hand tonight. Put a card in every hand tonight. The hand of God is writing on the wall. The hand of God is writing on the wall. It's time, it's time, it's time to make a decision. I said, it's time. Make a decision. It's time to repent. A lesson from history. The lesson is do what you know to be right. Follow the light you have. Follow the truth you have. Follow the light you have. Follow the light you have. Would you sing it softly, please? Would you sing it softly? Follow the light you have. Follow the truth you have heard. Walk in obedience to what you know. Trust and obey. Trust God and obey the word of God trust God and obey the word of God 
For there is no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Some of you have come through so much trouble. God has saved you. He has saved you through all of those trials. He has covered you under the hand of protection. Somebody, some mother, some father is praying for you right now that you and your children will come back to the God of your fathers. That you and your children will come back to the God of your mothers. You've come too far. You've been through too much. Why don't you put what you've got left in the hand of God? Why don't you close the door on the past? Let him heal your hurt. Let him heal your hurt. Let him open doors for you. But he can't do it without you putting your life in his hands. Will you trust him tonight? This coming Saturday is the final baptism for Footprints 3. At the end of this week, God wants to see you in the water settling that decision. God wants to see you in the water settling that decision. Settling that decision. It's dangerous to know right and do wrong. It's dangerous to hear the voice of God and slam the door shut in his face. I'm done. You're in the chat tonight. You're on line with us. You're on YouTube or Facebook or wherever you are joining us from. Maybe you have been struggling with the decision. Scan that QR code. Fill out the card. Send a WhatsApp message to the number on the screen. Call the number on the screen. There are folk upstairs in the prayer room. There are people upstairs right now by the computer, by the telephone lines, in the prayer room, in the tech room, looking out for your decision, looking out for your outstretched hand. The word of God has come to you. God has been calling you. It's time now for you to make a decision. But there is no other way to be happy in Jesus but to trust and obey. Would you hold your card up and somebody will come for it. There's a card here. There's a card here. Would you, would you hold the card up? Somebody will get it from you. Just hold it up. Somebody will come and get it from you. To be happy in Jesus. You come right over yonder. If you hold it up, somebody will come and get it. There's a card. Could you come to the card right down front? Please, please. If you hold it up, somebody will come and get it from you. I'm going to ask you to stand. And I'm going to ask our union vice president. If he will not come and intercede tonight. There are backsliders. They are persons who have drifted from the fold. There are persons who have wandered from Jesus who need to come back. There are persons who have never been baptized. But you've heard God's voice. You've been hearing about the commandments of God. You've heard Jesus say that if you love him, you want to keep his commandments. You've heard the word of God said, blessed are they that do his commandments. You've heard Jesus say, repent, for the kingdom of God is at hand. You've heard the call to repentance. Our heads are bowed. On this final Wednesday night, whether you're in Hanover, St. Elizabeth, Westmoreland, or St. James, or anywhere in Jamaica, whether you are in any of the islands in the Caribbean, 
whether you are in the continent of our world, God is calling you. There's a lesson from history. Don't disregard the light that God has sent you. There's a lesson from history. Don't reject the truth that God has sent you. There's a lesson from history. Daniel said, Belshazzar, though you know these things, you have not humbled your heart. I'm done. Dr. Smith, would you lift up an intercession tonight for persons who've drifted from the fold to come back, for persons who've never been baptized to understand the critical urgency of the moment. May the grace of God be with us as we approach the mercy seat. Our heads are bowed. Hearts lifted heavenward. Our gracious Father in heaven, tonight again you have spoken. One more time, Lord, you have stretched out your arms in love, calling your children to yourself. Yes. One more time, Heavenly Father, you have used your manservant. You have spoken to him and through him. And tonight, gracious Lord, the message has come through clearly. And we place in your hands now your children who are struggling. Lord, there are men and women, boys and girls tonight who are in the valley of decision. Yes, Lord, yes. They are persons tonight, Heavenly Father, who need to say yes, Lord, yes, to your will mm. and to your way. Mm -hmm. The lesson from history Reminding us, gracious Lord, that to see light is to obey. To hear the truth is to follow. Yes, Lord. And oh God, we pray you have been using your manservant night after night, Sabbath after Sabbath. Your words have gone forth. Men and women have heard the Spirit has brought about conviction and conversion. But there are still someone tonight, gracious Lord. Someone in the valley of indecision. And we pray even now, gracious Lord, that you will move upon that heart. Bring conviction. Bring conversion. Not only here in this auditorium, gracious Lord, but that person at that, uh, at, in that church, that person who is watching that screen, that young man who is standing up, he has heard your voice, that yes. young lady tonight, Heavenly Father. Through the medium of your spirit, bring conviction. Yes, Lord. Bring conversion. Oh God, we pray tonight that somebody tonight will not be able to rest peacefully until he or she say, yes, Lord, yes, mm -hmm. to your will and to your way. Lord, your desire is our salvation. You want every single person to be saved. We beg you, Jesus. To the moving of your Holy Spirit tonight, that, that not one person will rest until they have surrendered all to Jesus. Yes. Hear our prayer. Thank you for your manservant. Thank you for using him. The message is clear. The message is distinct. And oh God, grant now that every single person who has heard will surrender to you. The saints will continue their journey with you. And in the end, we will hear the well done from the lips of Jesus. Thank you for what you are doing. Thank you for the conviction that has been wrought. Thank you for the victory. And this coming Sabbath, gracious Lord, this Sabbath when the waters are troubled, yes. we pray, oh God, that someone yes. will say, yes, Lord, yes, yes, Lord. yes. to your will, to your way. Somebody will step out of a church Somebody will step out of a family. Somebody will step out of, from friends and associates. Somebody will step out for you. Make that commitment. Thank you for hearing. Thank you for answering. Thank you for the victories won. We leave it now in your loving hands. 
guide us as we travel home. Watch over us as we rest. And continue to use us for your glory. Bless your manservant. Bless his family. Bless this team, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Beloved, I'm so glad you came tonight. And I pray the living God that as you've come, may the word be a lamp to your feet and a light to your path. It has been my joy to share worship with you tonight. There'll be no meeting tomorrow night. We have one more night for Footprints, and that's Friday night. And I look forward to seeing you here. Bring a friend with you. Bring your family. It's going to be our last night for Footprints this coming Friday night. And if this is your first night here, we welcome you with joy. And we look forward to seeing you on Friday evening. And whatever you do, you can't miss being out here this coming Saturday May the grace of God be with you. We have two more meeting times, Friday night and Saturday. We'll see you in the place with your feet beneath the seat as we lift up the name of Jesus. And as usual, be safe. And we have, well, I don't know color, but that's pink or something. We have two pink girls tonight, uh, bright pink and big. Well, I don't know if it's baby pink or adult pink, but pink. And thereafter, we will have, for the final time, my three daughters, where we speak to nations. May God bless you wherever you're listening or watching from. We speak to nations. The kingdom is coming. Hear the word of God. We'll see you on Friday evening. And what a powerful word tonight, friends. Listen, what took place will happen again. And you've heard the voice of God tonight. Why will you turn your back on the creator? I'm encouraging a young lady, a young man, choose Jesus. You will never regret it, I promise you. As we speak to nations, continue to yearn after the king. He only wishes that you be saved and not be lost. Absolutely, Kamara. Well, we have come to the end of another night of Next Levelness. Yes. And so we're inviting you to be back on Friday evening at 6.30 p.m. where the Next Level experience continues. Well, on that note, we'd like to say thank you so much for joining. We were happy to have you here in the place this evening. And so on behalf of the entire West Jamaica Conference media and production team, we say to you, have a beautiful night and rest well. But the Foster Triplets will take us out as we continue to speak to nations. Bye. <laughs>
to come home can you hear him make that decision to join the family of god by being baptized and following him all the way join us this saturday as we celebrate another homecoming baptism whether it's your first time or you're returning join thousands from across the world by walking with jesus to the next level